There's the, the there's the alert. Have you seen them? I didn't see yet. Yeah, the alert has come. Oh, we are we are live. It come. Ah, it's yeah? Come yeah. Perfect. Give me just ten seconds. I didn't see that. Why? Not Wait. yet. Okay. Oh, yes. Uh, okay. Yes. Perfect. Give me, give me five seconds, please. I shared it. <laughs> okay. Well, hello, everybody. Good morning here in, in Mexico, in all America. Um, good evening in Europe, good evening in St. Petersburg, Russia. My name is Alejandro Castillo, and uh, well, I salute you from all the way from Mexico City. Today, Monday, November 16th of 2020, this um, COVID year, but well, I hope that uh, pretty soon we, we can, we can uh, go back to volleyball activities. I'm very glad today because uh, I have a great, great guest, great volleyball personality. Um, very, 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 very humble person. Uh, I say hello to Thomas Amelbuo to St. Petersburg, Russia. How are you, Thomas? Hello, Alejandro, and a uh, pleasure to, to join your program. And you're doing a great job. A lot of great interviews I've seen uh, once. And all good here, evening, uh, free day after the game. So getting ready for tomorrow's work to go back to the gym with the team. All good. Okay. Well, thanks, thanks a lot for your time, Thomas. Here in Mexico is holiday. Today is uh, Revolution Day, so uh, a lot of people is in in home. So I expect that they can they can watch us, they can send uh, comments, they can interact and uh, and share this streaming. Thanks a lot again, Thomas, for being here. Thank you, thank you. Well, we we spoke uh, a few months ago. Uh, it was difficult to match the agenda, but well, uh, finally we are here. And I, I thank you again. Yeah, we tried sometimes and uh, finally uh, all matched. And uh, yeah, just uh, I hope I can share also some thoughts and some feelings about our great sport. The great, the, the greatest sports in the world, Thomas. Yes, it's the most team sport in the world. If we think, uh, I always speak about that because in volleyball, you can touch the ball only less than half second let's say like let's say like this and nobody is able to take the ball and and to get somewhere so we all depend on our teammates so much it's a great game yes yes of course well how's everything uh, over there in russia uh, you know with this uh covid thing tough times tough times and also today uh actually with um, with few teams and uh, with our our um, head of our club, uh, we had to move some games and uh, we are trying to find uh, from the already very busy calendar some days where to put these games that we couldn't play. And uh, a lot of teams had, uh, had COVID, uh, we couldn't uh, play uh, when we should. And it's, it's um, like a very interesting season new like a new thing for everybody so we plan we plan then we have to change the plan we have to change it again and and so very interesting and uh, also tough times yes yeah, i can imagine well uh, luciano de Checo, the great setter from argentina was here from friday and he told me almost the same he told me hey we don't know if we will play next week or if there yeah. uh, will be we will allow it to play and well in italy i think the same thing like in russia well in Europe, I, I say Europe because it's a is a part of the world where the pro league started a few months ago. But yeah, it, it's tough. I can imagine. Yeah, it's tough. But but uh, also like we played yesterday after three weeks of uh, waiting and uh, practicing and uh, so just the joy to be on the court, even if it was not with full crowd. 
the joy to be on the court to play again was uh, like visible and untouchable. So, so I think we few few time ago we were thinking about if there will be spectators. We play with the empty gyms, but uh, as soon as still we are playing, so that's already good news. But um, yeah, we really, really hoping that it, it will get easier, but uh, uh, still it's like this. So we just have to adapt. We just have to adapt and uh, it's, it's useless to complain. So no complaints, just trying to look forward. Yeah, well, I think uh, I can imagine that the most difficult thing about a uh, pro sport like uh, like volleyball in Russia or like baseball and fo uh, American football in USA is uh, to have the empty stadiums, empty arenas. How's the feeling with uh, with the players, with the coaching staff about that? It, I mean, it's it's compulsory right now, but but it, it's 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 different, right? I think we are already pretty much used to it. Of course, uh, in the beginning, beginning was was very weird because uh, it's like a situation, like a little bit in the practice. But uh, um, of course, the official game brings the adrenaline, brings the excitement of the game. You can feel, but of course, uh, uh, well, I think for the team that plays at home, uh, that uh, the home team is doesn't have that crowd that uh, that there normally is so i think that's that's the way how it really really touches the teams and uh, the advantage uh, at the pressure of home crowd uh, is not there so that's different uh, but uh, still we for example we played a few games with 25% of capacity of the gym that the people could come that's already something and uh, And uh, I'm thinking also like the sport worldwide, uh, volleyball worldwide, and, and for the fans, because they also live by the, the calendar of the games. It's, it's like a party for everybody. So really, really hoping that we get, uh, get to the normal situation as soon as possible. But on the other hand, uh, the health of the people and, and all the economy and thing, I think it, it goes uh, uh, above the sport. So let's hope that... Uh, we can stay all healthy as possible yeah yeah of course and uh, how's the the rest of the calendar of the of the russian league uh, from the from the coming weeks so well well now we were actually supposed to play european cups but we won't because also they are changing uh, so we are waiting new info information for by the european cups how how we'll play we play in safe cup And uh, we are waiting that information. But for us, like we play, we played yesterday. Now Saturday, we have a very tough game against Fakel Novi Urengoy at home. Then we play uh, against uh, Lokomotiv Novosibirsk on Tuesday at home. That's the game that we we were supposed to play a long time ago, but we didn't. And uh, after that, um, we go to uh, Krasnoyarsk. Uh, that's the easiest team that there is in the league. So I think now, uh, like uh, after a few times of just uh, practice, we, we start to play, play, play a lot. So hopefully if, if the uh, situation is not getting worse. I hope, I hope, I hope not. Today um, I was reading the breaking news. Moderna laboratories say that their vaccine test was 95 percent uh, uh, positive so well I think that it's, it's, it's a little big news uh, in inside this uh, this storm of, of news right absolutely of course I follow a lot the news from Finland from Europe from world from uh, everywhere and uh, yeah good news and uh, I have the dream that uh, the Olympic Games, will be the end of end of this uh covid epidemic uh pandemia it will be the the uh, the the end of this and the start of new era of celebration of um of healthy world that healthier world let's say like that 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 could be like the logical approach uh, approachment for for that so i hope oh, it will be like that the olympic games will start the new new era yeah i hope so too i think it's like a it's like a psychological uh 
uh, timeline, right? The Olympics. Yeah, exactly. exactly. Next year, yeah. the Olympics. Yeah. Yeah, because a lot of people together, a celebration of, of the, the sport, all the sports together. And not only sports, it's it's like a celebration of something, something very big. So hopefully we'll go like that. Yeah, totally agree with you, Thomas. Well, um, I have uh, the, the first messages. My good friend, Octavio Medina, he's now living in Seattle, Washington, USA, and says greetings to Thomas and Alejandro. Thanks. Thanks, Octavio. Thank you. Uh, and another another friend from Mexico, from Puebla, Mexico, Rafael Carrillo says, Alejandro, good morning, congratulations. Great guest, Tuomas Amelbuo. Yes, of course, the, the, a great, great person. First, a great person, then a great coach, of course. Well, it's up to you to just judge. So, uh, yeah, just trying to, to improve and work and uh, enjoy this sport and, of course, the life also. So, and... Um, you are doing actually a great job. So you are fantastic. You have brought the volleyball for so many people during this uh, pandemic. So good job. Oh, thanks. Well, by, by the way, uh, we have to mention that this is episode 117. Thank, thanks a lot for being here, Thomas. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, already 117. So it's a pretty big number. Yeah, I think, you have yeah. been working maybe more than usually. So <laughs> yes, you know. For good guests. And, uh, yeah, you know, oh. I, well, I think that this pandemic or this pandemic time, it, it was, in this case, was good for me because I, I was pushed to 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 make real, to make it happen. This, or this, uh, this all year long dream because I I want to share this volleyball passion to talk with a lot of personalities about volleyball about what they think volleyball, about their beginnings, to know them better as a person, more than a coach or a player or a referee. And uh, what well, I think we, well, do you know, we think uh, I have discovered this month is that um, we are a very, very, very kind community, you know, of volleyball around the world. And we are, we are little than we knew, you know, because for example, I'm talking right now with you, um, talking with you is like talking with uh, with Pep Guardiola of, of football. It can be, I think it could be very more difficult to talk with people like Pep Guardiola or Cristiano Ronaldo or, or people like that. But we in volleyball, we are, we are, I think we are a very kind community. What do you think? Totally agree. And it's uh, mm, so always when you, you meet people, actually volleyball world is huge, but it's small. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> At the same time, because um, so when when during the club seasons we are playing against each other, we are seeing the coaches, all the workers, referees, and and uh, officials, uh, the team staff members in the league. Then in summer we see each other in national teams and around the world. And I think there's a mutual respect uh, between uh, between our our sport. I, I'm. I'm sure that there's also this in in uh, in other sports, but I, I think volleyball. What I said before, it, it's a great team sport, uh, team sport, and can teach a lot of values, uh, good values for for people. And uh, it's up to us to to support that uh, trend that we are good people, respect these others, and then when there's the court and there's a game, then we. We see who who is better, and there we there we fight. But outside of the court, they, yeah, there's a mutual respect. I totally agree with you. Uh, well, at the end, the volleyball was created in USA uh, as a family sport. You know, uh, there it was created in Massachusetts, a place where uh, at, at this time of the year is a uh, lot of cool, uh, uh, snowing, and it was it was created with that spirit. I think uh, that spirit is still uh, is still uh, valid in these days yeah and, and, and to start volleyball what do we need a ball that's that's all what we need we can build a net uh, somehow everywhere we can uh, well for example here in world. mexico here in mexico in elementary school or high school uh we used to to attach the the jackets <laughs> between two yeah, poles yeah, exactly to, so to have a net it, it, it's not so easy sport technically when do you start uh, yeah not so easy sport but it's easy to start i mean with the equipment uh, like with with my brothers 
and when we were children uh, living at home still we played in the in the last room uh, on the on the bed and on the sofa one was blocking one was sitting one was hitting and then then uh, it stopped when when something was falling from the walls and father came and took the ball away and got angry like guys you, you gotta calm down because here nobody can leave because you hit the walls and there's <laughs> so it's, it's, we can play there everywhere yeah well t t tell me something about your, your beginnings you you born let me let me see if i can spell it pudas pudas jarvi finland pudas jarvi pudas jarvi <laughs> Yeah, it's yeah. A, it's, a, it's a little town, right? In the middle of... Very, very small town. Actually, in this moment, la, less than 10,000 people. That time, there were still 11,000 people or, or something like that. And yeah, I... That time, we were doing all the sports, basically. And uh, every kind of sports with, with, with friends, with the, uh, the guys from our class. And uh, I was... Uh, my main sport was actually uh, ski jumping and and skiing together like the nordic combination well, and, it, it, it's it's obvious in a country like finland right <laughs> yeah yeah but uh, yeah actually yes and uh, then i i fell down on my shoulder i i still can feel the bone what, that was broken here i really? fell down on my my face but uh, that's the most beautiful sport because when you fly when you're in good shape everything happens in like less than second not not even that much so it's a great sport then but then i was then um after like 12 13 i started to focus more and more on volleyball and it i got that huge motivation inside me to 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 start to practice 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 and uh, and uh, from our class, we had basically one junior team from the guys from our class, plus some other guys from not in our class. And, and we became a team. We also won the championship in Finland in 91 and uh, a great memories. And, uh, and of course, father, he was, uh, he was in volleyball. He, he was the president of the, that club that time, but also he played volleyball in not, not the highest level, but then he was working in Finnish Federation also uh, as the president of the Federation later. And and uh, with, with, with my brothers and sister, we all played and, and mother was uh, cooking and taking care of uh, those things and, and participating like that. And, and, and just like uh, for me, it felt the, the sport that I, I loved. And, and then a little bit later, I started to have these dreams of playing as a professional and uh, I think there's no a bigger power in the world that that the inside will to decide to do something. When you decide to do something, and you just uh, you just go, no matter what, you you try to reach your goals, and you, it be, becomes a passion. And then uh, I think some results will come after. And uh, yeah, now it's great to remember those rules because, of course. I'm very proud where I'm from, and and thanks parents, brothers, and the family members, and of course the coaches from the from the beginnings, also the teammates that that we had. Right. So uh, it was uh, your family was a volleyball family. You can say that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All played in in first league of Finland. All played actually in national, not all in national teams, but. Uh, I think all have medals from Finnish league. No, right. Maybe, yes. No, maybe no, no. maybe the, the youngest one doesn't. But yeah. Well, uh, well uh, Finland is a country that uh, they they used to be uh, in, in world league every year, uh, uh, almost uh, before the, the the new format of uh, BNL. But uh, at the end, um, volleyball is 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 a big thing in Finland, right? Yeah, well, that time when uh, I think the Fed Finnish Federation already a long time ago started to focus on on high level sport and uh, and uh, there were decisions like uh, to collect the young players together, go to the school 
and practice together, like to have the juniors national teams together, like a concentrated uh, training program from 16 years old. And for sure, that's uh, that that was a good decision, and and, um, and we could uh, because we don't we don't have a lot of uh, people living in Finland, not so much volleyball players. So to get everything out of out of the the small amount of players, I think we did it pretty well. Even if there's a lot of to improve always uh, in in the system, and uh, and then in in later uh, 2006 the federation had to make really fast decisions uh, because greece wouldn't play anymore the next year's world league and uh, and finland had to make a very fast decision if to take and try to take the place and and uh, and they took it uh, it was a very very important decision for the improvement of uh, of men's national team and uh, and uh, after that uh, and that the road, uh, also Maru Beruto became the coach, uh, showed what does it mean to put every small detail in, in order. And uh, also before that, before him, the coaches were already like focusing more and more on, on professional practices. And uh, but that that world league, I think, changed a lot. And, and, and uh, the mentality that were built that time. And uh, it's still it's still there. Now we have a little bit harder times, and um, there are more girls than than boys. Girls volleyball is improving, and we just have to find more more boys to play the game and uh, and organize uh, better and better all the things. And uh, it's not easy in today's world because I think there are a lot of uh, like new sports. Uh, younger people are maybe a little bit. Um, not so patient than before, and, and the people like to try new things. And and to get, once the people get to the volleyball practice, the, the, the young guys, it should be so good that they stay there. So uh, it's a challenge of, of today. Yeah, well, I think want... volleyball is still popular. Yeah, it, it's people yeah, but, know it but... a lot. Uh, you, you, are, you are not the first person that, uh, to, that uh, tell me that. Also in USA, they have they have a, a little trouble to to get uh, more young people involved in in a sport like volleyball. Um, and well, it's I think it's a pretty common thing in in a lot of countries, right? In Mexico, it happens a little. It, it's it's a little difficult. I think uh, it's because uh, people young people right now they have a lot of distract, distractions, um, digital distractions, uh, phones and uh, and uh, computers, iPads. Uh, the what, what do you think what do you think we can the volleyball people can do, to to attack that i think it, it's i don't like to speak that the young people of today no all right because the the if we had all these things we would act, act in the same way in the past i think so but th these things have changed a lot the world because uh, you can let's say i want to have pizza now so i just order and uh, when it comes to to my door if i'm really tired i play i pay one dollar or one euro more and i will get it here in in front of me so everything is a little bit easier easier and i think we all a little bit used to that and uh, and then when you get to for example to volleyball practice you, you need to be patient because it's not so easy to start volleyball technically and and that the that we could play immediately so what is the thing and and uh, the the children get to volleyball practice and how to make that first experience so good and so enthusiastic for them that they will come again so I think those those things are important. Of course, the idols, uh, and uh, it's interesting thinking. But I think we face uh, maybe a little bit the same things in in other sports too. And um, the world is interesting. It has changed a lot when 15, 20 years ago. So yeah, of course. I think, uh, it's not uh, good to say that, yeah, in our times was different. No, 
the world is like it is and with all these things that are happening today so um, we have to find new ways to get people involved in in our great sport too yeah well uh mr john kessel was here a few months ago did you know john kessel he's uh, he's yes, american yes. great coach of coaches and he told me hey first thing we have to do is to get involved and and kids and young people in volleyball and in the way that they love to go to practice and they exactly. go back to practice the next day yes That's exactly exactly yeah or it doesn't matter about uh, cell phones or about uh, streaming or stunts or social media is get get the get the boy and or the girl interested in volleyball that they love fell in love with the game and that they desire to come back the, the next day yeah and uh, also i think uh, the things that also are important that that now during the pandemic are not doable but uh, i hope the world will be a little bit more normal soon and when in big games when when big teams play and the idols of these young guys play one autograph one photo uh, it can be a life changing uh, um, thing for for young kid i got photo with my idol yeah. he told me good luck for you mom dad i want to go to volleyball practice i saw him he you know those things and then when they go to the practice it has to be so so good and they that they fall in, in in love with that and and they come again again and and we attract them and uh, volleyball is a is a great sport a team sport and can teach also a lot of values it's good for the parents to think like that Lord, i agree with you uh for example i can imagine a, a, a young kid in, in russia that um in in a game of uh senica sanford for, for saying a team and he has a picture and an, and an autograph from Maxi Mikhailov, or from uh, from Alexander Volkov, or from Dmitry Mussorgsky, and uh, I think I think I think that doesn't change with the years, 30 years ago, 20 years ago, right now, and uh, that that did that that this kid, uh, just imagine, he fell in love with volleyball just because he has a picture with Maxi Mikhailov. Totally agree. It doesn't change, and it was the same for me. I will, I used to watch and, and uh, imitate the, the, the my idols and I remember watching, for example, the, the final of uh, World Championships, uh, Italy against Cuba in 90. Yeah. Uh, it was a great game and all the, I wrote all the statistics of the game and, and uh, watching your idols. So I think they have really, really big meaning for, for the career of everything and uh, as you said it didn't change at all phones no phones uh, whatever it didn't change it, it always stays the same yeah and um also I, one of the biggest conclusions i have in this on all this time with volley talks is, is that is we have to to build uh, idols we have to promote idols uh like uh, football does with cristiano ronaldo leo messi or basketball does uh, with uh, Michael Jordan or LeBron James, we have to, to, to grow our, our idols in volleyball, yeah, because they will be the, the first and the most important ambassadors to grow this game. Yes, totally agree. And uh, if we think about basketball, you know, LeBron James, uh, they have, I think that sport, for example, Michael Jordan, what the, everybody I think has been watching the last dance for the, and um, you know, that somebody that is the face of the sport, football, Messi, Ronaldo, uh, et cetera, et cetera. And, and in volleyball, I think that's one thing that maybe we are sometimes missing a little bit. Now, now like last year, for example, when Irvin and Cabet is doing some uh, some kind of tricks that uh, sometimes we coaches we hold our head that oh, but actually those things um, those things are the ones also that uh, that uh, 
give the possibility to fall in love with, 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 the, with the sports. Somebody is doing something different, spectacular, and uh, but it, <laughs> we are coaches think that it, it has to be in some certain kind of limit that it's useful for the team. But for example, anyway, right I now, think... right now in Japan, Yuji Nishida, the opposite, is a big, big, great idol. Yes, yes, he is a, yeah, he, he amazing player, really not tall, but jumping and, and like very spectacular player. So yeah, we, we have to use those, uh, those ones to like the, the holder of the flag of volleyball and the, When they become that, it's also important that they have their personality, they, their style of, of life also, but be also good people. Yeah, you know, well, uh, Thomas, and talking about idols, which players were your idols when you were growing in the, in the sport? Well, I, I had a lot, but I, I mentioned that game. Uh, 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 and I, I remember Andrea Zorzi played uh, an amazing game. Yeah. Uh, of course, all the yeah, Bernardi, and uh, from the Cuban side, Joel de Spain. I think Joel de Spain was great. He was screaming after every spike, and uh, that was one personality also that uh, that uh, was very interesting. But uh, I had a lot. I, I was used to follow a lot of players, and also the, that years from Sweden, Bengt Gustafsson, yeah, was uh, one pretty great idol for me and yeah but I could mention 20 players that I, I <laughs> well I remember very well from from that time uh, Ron Zverber from Netherlands yes yes great uh, absolutely the great, one yeah one great players yeah great player yeah and uh, I think for me the best game probably to watch is, and the most interesting game is is Atlanta's Olympic final 96 yeah, right. Italy Holland that was yeah. some that was something and Yeah, well, Netherlands uh, was coming from uh, from a silver medal in Barcelona, losing to Brazil, and it yes. was a great generation, you know, uh, they getting the gold in Atlanta, it was a great moment, I do agree with you. Yes, yeah, it was. <laughs> and Italy was so close to get the, the, the one that they, they still miss, and uh, yeah. Yeah, I think, I think they won, I don't know, three or four world championships, but never get the gold medal, it was a... Uh, It was a little, that was a, the little stain in the in the in Italy, right? Yeah, yeah, and also there now, uh, Andrea Zorzi actually is doing a great job. He's putting online the, the interviews with with the players of that time, that that uh, World Championships in Cuba, and it's very interesting to hear a little bit of the background of how everything was built, and uh, yeah, it's it's a big story. But they but they still miss that the, the big biggest one. Yeah, right. Uh, we have uh, more messages. My my very good friend, uh, Fidel Mar Muñoz from Mexico says, Alejandro, you have the best in the world. Yes, of course. Uh, take take Thomas to Xochimilco. Well, Xochimilco is a, is a, is a touristic uh, tour here in Mexico with lakes and uh, channels or something like that. It's very, very funny. Have you ever been in Mexico, Thomas? Actually, I haven't. I, I have to come. Yes. Yeah, I haven't been. I haven't been, yeah. Hope you can be there and enjoy our great beaches and our fantastic food. Yes, I really, <laughs> really would love. Really would love and hopefully, actually for sure, one day it comes. It okay, comes. I hope so. Please, please, Maybe to uh, Cancun. Maybe to Cancun. Oh yeah, Cancun is great. <laughs> please let me know when you came. <laughs> uh, my very good friend, Ana Isabel Frias, uh, she, she, uh, she, uh, she was in this show in last Saturday, he was uh, fourth place in the yes. Junior World Olympics, Junior World, Junior World Championships. He's from Mexico, says greetings to both. Thank you. Thank and, you so and another great friend, Alfredo Cabero, uh, he's from Chile. We share the same passion for this sport. He has his own, his own show. He says, congratulations, Alex. Best regards to Tuomas, greetings from Chile. Thank you. Best regards for you too. And another a good friend of Mexico, a big fan of Volley Talks, Itza Gallego says, greeting Alex and Thomas, congratulate him on the great job he has done with the Russian national team and seen it signed for Petersburg. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I think this is a friend of you, Jane Inget 
6, Sky Jump, Haiba uh -huh. Copy. Haiba Copy. Yeah, actually, he, I was ski jumping with him uh, in, the, in the junior's time. Yeah, hello, Janne. Terve, terve. <laughs> hey, uh, please remember me the name of that great Finnish uh, sky jumper. Matti uh, Nykänen. Uh, yeah, multiple, multiple time uh, Olympic champion. Yes, actually, unfortunately, he passed away uh, some time ago. And yeah, for, he was for me also the big idol when I, when I was ski jumping. So yeah, was uh, he had something in his board, actually, he was he had something more than the others and uh, yeah he was a big star big star another message from uh, uh sorry for my for my finish Kasmierczak. <laughs> oh he's from poland actually i played ah, with poland. him in zakta kenzerzin cin dobre cin dobre jak si masz he says ciao copy 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 Ciao, Köpi actually is my nickname. Uh, yeah. In Finland, for example, nobody calls me Thomas. It's always Köpi. So, Köpi. Köpi. When I was at school in the in the beginning of nineties, they they actually one referee today in Finland. He's a referee. He found it out that name uh, at that time. And yeah, in Finland, I'm Köpi. Like it's, it's my nickname. Kiopi, yeah, and and it. What does it this? What does it means? It's just uh, like a nickname, and it was one uh, maybe one person, very famous person in oh, in right. city of Tampere in Finland, and from that I don't even remember how it became my nickname. Okay, but it's, it's they Kiopi. told me like that. Yeah, Kiopi. 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 Yeah. Okay. Kiopi. Not okay. bad already. Not bad. <laughs> can I can I say you, QP? Yes. <laughs> no, no, no. It's Mr. Samuel Buo. <laughs> uh, another friend of you, Ronald Sarti. Greetings, Thomas Samuel Buo. Oh, ciao, Ronald. Uh, he played in Finland. Uh, he played in Finland. I had a small experience as a assistant coach of the team where he played, and yeah, he was really powerful spiker. Not Tolba and a great person. Ciao. Hey Thomas, how many languages do you talk? I speak uh, okay, English, French, and Italian for me are uh, pretty much the same. So with, with those languages I can handle, let's say, very easily. Then I speak Russian. I pretty actually well, I can read, uh, write, but of, of course I, I have to improve. I um, if I stay one month in Poland, I think I can speak the Polish too, really okay. But uh, I don't use it, so so I understand when the people speak. But uh, but I I would need some time. But it would it would become pretty fast, I think. Then I spoke also Japanese, but I forgot it because I didn't use it. I spoke when I played there 2005, 2006, but of course no practice, so I can't say that I speak that. Wow, so, that's amazing. It was in May. Uh, yeah, for me, the languages were and still are the passion. I, I promised my father that when I left uh, to France, that where I go, I will teach, the, I, I will learn the language. And I tried and, and uh, almost every language I made it. So and it, it's also a bit, I think, a way to show the respect for the country that, that hires me. So and to know more about people, about the culture. And, and of course, now to have the contacts all over the world it, and, and using their language is, is, for me, it's very important, very important. Uh, I can imagine that no Spanish or a little. Uh, no, but with Italian, uh, if you speak Spanish, uh, not uh, like in a Mexican way when you are in, in the afternoon, uh, afternoon traffic. <laughs> so, <laughs> If you speak slowly, for sure I understand you because Italian is so clear. So I, I can understand Spanish, but uh, to speak, uh, no. But yeah, it's, okay. it's so close that it's understandable. And what, which one is the most difficult? Like in Polish, maybe? Yeah, yeah. Or, uh, or Russian? Polish, Russian, because in Russia also you have a, a lot of different S's and uh, to, to, that the, the ear hears the difference. It's 
it's not easy, but um, but now I use it every day, so it's pretty common already, not not difficult. And um, French in the beginning is not, it was not easy because the pronunciation is totally different than than the other languages. So and uh, yeah, Italian I think is the clearest one. It's very clear language. So yeah. wow, pretty amazing! Congratulations, yeah. Thomas. Thank you. Uh, Isa Gallego says, uh, what message can you give to the new generation of coaches? Passion. Yeah, that's right. Passion. I think Trade, trademark, trademark word, passion, of course. Yes, because if, if you have passion of something, if you love something, uh, the road, you will find it. And uh, I think... Uh, of course, I was a player. Then, when you become a coach, and one day the world looks a little bit different. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, what I love in coaching, maybe I could share this thought to, to think about the others. It's just simple, simple way to how you can make other people great, to help them become great. So your success depends on on what they can do. So it's. Uh, uh, it's very interesting, but passion, I would say passion. Passion, learn, teach, uh, help, uh, be humble to learn and, and to face difficulties also. Right, uh, well, uh, talking about passion, uh, we, we'll talk about your, your, your pro uh, player career, of course, but talking about passion right now, uh, in which moment did you decide that uh, your path was to, after uh, you quit uh, playing, to be a coach? Uh, it, it was always clear in your mind or, or what happened? I think it was in the process in my head. Uh, I was 36, I was in Novosibirsk, uh, Russia, uh, playing in the second team and helping them a little bit like a player coach. And then played. I played some Champions League games with the first team, and, and then just suddenly became the possibility to become the head coach of Finland. Because in my mind, I was still uh, ready to play one or two years, but then be became this possibility that I put put all the pluses and minuses, and then I decided to candidate. And then it became the, the reality. And of course, uh, after that has been pretty, pretty interesting. And uh, but now after eight years, uh, I'm happy that I made that decision that time. Uh, uh, of course, to become immediately the head coach and the coach of the players that you played with is, is very, it's not easy. And, uh, and um, but I think I, I, I'm happy that I finished in the right moment to play. I could finish at high level, uh, not to finish when I have to finish because I can't make it anymore. So I, I finished still in, in, in good level. So and immediately I had a new challenge, something new, uh, but not totally new. So I'm, I, it will all happen, in, I think, in a, in a good moment. And, course I'm very uh, thankful for the people in, in the people that that time chose me as a coach of Finland because it's the most amazing job and the most uh, difficult job but the most greatest job and uh, that I, I could imagine to do so I'm the, the learning to lead and all the things that are wrong so it's very it's been very interesting Thanks, thanks, Wormas. Well, I, I'm I'm seeing right now your your player career is amazing. You started in Pudas Pudas Jarven team. Yes. Uh, since '85, I mean, 35 years ago. <laughs> really? Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I thought about. I spoke about passion. So um, I consider myself very lucky uh, that. Uh, from the hobby of childhood, uh, I could have uh, uh, my my job, job at the pass at the same time uh, as a player, and and 
very honored that I, I got the possibility to play with with great players, great teammates, in, with great coaches, and also to win something important. And uh, and uh, yeah, just uh, we have great sports. So I, I'm I consider myself very very lucky. Well, and I can see here well, Pudas, Pudas Jarven, then Olun Eta, Raison, Raison Loimu, who is also yes. in Finland, then Strasbourg Volleyball in France, yes, yes. then Stade, Stade Poitiers, France, then you move to Italy, Piemonte Volley, Piacenza, Tours Vivi in France, to Jora in Japan, yes. <laughs> then Dino Mujantar, Kaliningrad, Voli Calipo, it's Italy, I think. Yeah, it's actually Vibo Valencia. Uh, oh, that we Vibo. spoke. Uh, Vibo, yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. Great, Great news year. on the weekend. Uh, Lube, the Lube was undefeated. And uh, yesterday, uh, Lube uh, lost with, uh, with Vibo Calabria 3-1. The, the news of the, of the year, I think. Yeah, always when those uh, big teams lose uh, it's more news than when they win so uh, <laughs> but i think for for a great team like lube um, the best of last years so can be also very useful to have a little stop sometimes yeah right well then uh saxa in poland locomotive in Osibirts. then you could go back to uh, italy with perugia and you ended as you as you told us with the Novosibirsk. Great career, uh, six, five, six countries, a lot of teams with a lot of great players and great coaches, right? Yes, uh, yes. Uh, as I said, I'm I'm very honored and lucky that I could have a possibility to play in different great teams for different great coaches with good players. So, but it's not about. Uh, only about winning or, or losing or but it's uh, it also teaches you so much about uh, about life and about uh, success about uh, losing and uh, many times some some lost games can be more useful than the victories and uh, also I think it, it teaches the daily life with the team it teaches you to to respect the other people to understand how different people can be uh, and many times when when for example people stop with team sports and they go maybe to another job uh, i think my brother is a uh, brothers and sister a good example also for that that they all played then they stopped and they are all in in very very good jobs now in organizations and uh, I think we sports people we are good workers uh, in let's say in normal works after because uh, we are used to have trouble we know how to work in the team uh, work for the goals uh, never give up uh, face many different kind of circumstances circumstances and also to work under pressure so it's a good school Yeah, Thomas. In, in all these years of uh, as a player or, or and as a coach in the, in all these countries, um, which people can you say it can be they could they, they can be players or coaches or or other? Uh, which persons do you think are were your biggest mentors or influencers in your in your volleyball career? Um, I think. Mm, Yeah, in Finland, Mauro, Mauro Berrutto was the one. Uh, Mauro Berrutto was, yeah. was one who became came to Finland and he just changed the mentality, of everything, and uh, built that belief in something uh, together with the federation of the players and and uh, also before him, uh, two Finnish coaches, Timo Hoivala, Juha Sitting, they they gave me, if I think all about myself. They gave me a big role in the team still when I was very young. And uh, and then many, many different players that uh, that in inspired me. Uh, uh, coaches in Italy. Uh, mm, yeah, it's difficult to, to start to name many people and, and also 
I think Daniel Castellani also learned different things. Uh, but I think all the coaches, they, they, I, I got something if I think now as a coach. And now I, as a coach, I love to watch. Uh, I love to watch the speeches of the coaches. I, I, absolutely not only from volleyball. And uh, I could mention one one person, uh, Greg Popovic from San Antonio Spurs basketball yeah. NBA team. And uh, I think his values and how he handles the team and uh, always is about team. It's always about team. Not about one person and all what he he see, he says. Not only what he says, but what he does. So that's one I could mention one idol. And of course, in volleyball, Velasco, uh, many of these. I I love to watch uh, actually many many different coaches and try to have something and build uh, uh, my way and and. Also to understand how important is a good coaching staff and uh, players. It's just uh, so different thinking than as a player. Well, and as you told, it's important, yes, to know, to keep learning about volleyball, but not just volleyball. We can learn from coaches from other sports, from from speakers, from another another business speakers or people like that. Absolutely. Or, Right. Well, we have to be open to all kind of knowledge, not just volleyball. For sure, and uh, I could watch immediately one speech of uh, Steve Jobs, <laughs> and uh, and um, um, but when, when you when you watch, for example, the, the people that have had some success, and when they speak about their path and what they have done and what, uh, so I, I think that word passion always comes out from that everybody has little different ways uh, uh, but the passion and the, the will to do something uh, I think that's that's one that always uh, remains from everybody you can just feel that when somebody speaks about something that he he loves so I I, I watched also of course Bernardino is a uh, is amazing and what the, is a great person and uh, i remember when we played against brazil in poland 2014 world championships and we we played a great day great game with finland with 5000 finnish fans there we lost 3-0 but we had even set balls against brazil and and bernardinho just what he said after the game and it just uh, is a great person first and then and also a great coach and uh, I, I had also honor to be a guest of Mark Dunphy in, in, in States when I was visiting there at that time CEO of Finnish Federation and the female head coach so uh, those great I think what who had a great success they don't need to say that I'm great <laughs> yes, of course. They, just, they, they know it and uh, they can uh, there's, that, uh, that, uh, there's a quote, sorry, Tuomo. There's a quote, I, I don't remember the author, but they say, if you have to say you are the boss, you are not the boss. <laughs> well, it depends. It depends, of course. Well, I think we can't make those that kind of generational things, but but uh, I think it's obvious in some some people that uh, that they, like Greg Popo says, uh, they have gotten over themselves. I think is a good sentence. So it, it says a lot. Thanks, thanks a lot. Thanks a lot, Thomas, for sharing. We have more messages. Evi Quiñones says, saludos. Ter <laughs> Terversia, Thomas. Terversia, Evi. Terversia. Terversia is like, hello. Terversia, it's greetings. Ah, oh, greetings, Terversia. Yes, terve, terve means only hello. Ah, OK. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm a volleyball person also. Eddie works a long time as an agent and in, in beach volleyball. So. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I'm, I'm learning a little Finnish today. <laughs> uh, Next no, time we'll speak in Finnish. That's okay. one of the most langu difficult languages in the world, for sure. I, I can imagine. <laughs> Freddy Sedeño, a long time player, says, how many languages do you speak? You already told us that a lot 
And Jarmo, Jarmo, Niemela say, Tervesit, Pudas Jarva, Pudas Jarvelta. My cousin, Mori is the Jarmo, my cousin. Pudas Jarvelta. Pudas Jarvelta. Pudas Jarvelta, yeah, because from Pudas Jarvi, in Finnish you say Pudas Jarvelta. We don't have those from, uh, at, and we just put everything in the end of the world and it becomes a meaning. Of... Or maybe Helsinki Delta or Mexico Delta, something like that. Helsingista. <laughs> All right. Uh, Ryan Millard, the great American player, oh, yes. says... Um, Lots of good battles against Duomas and the Finnish team. Good memories. Good luck with Team Russia. <laughs> Always you are playing against the Americans. <laughs> Hello to Ryan, one of the very, very great players and uh, a lot of success. Hello, Ryan. Thanks for yeah. writing um, something. Yeah, well, uh, Rafael Carrillo from Puebla, Mexico says, is the discipline of Russian players different from other teams? Um, no, actually, no. I think um, maybe it has also changed. Uh, oh, also, in Russia, when I came to play here, it was really like the hard discipline. Of course, every coach or whatever is different and has to be himself, I think. But, but let's say this today's generation uh, is, is like all the others. There's not no i of course uh maybe the the for example if we think about uh i watch the time out of usa volleyball three four different coaches can speak uh, it's great uh, but but in russia for example also the system of the whole uh, like the the is built in this country of course the hierarchy and and the the it's very clear and the head coach for example really needs to show to be the head coach so i think there are also those cultural differences that for example for me or when i coach here i have to respect and understand and uh, and and to adapt uh, in their ways and still being myself and uh, that's that's i think also it's very very interesting in in but the discipline or whatever, I, what, what does it mean, discipline? I think uh, it's also a good question. So uh, for me, uh, there's a good discipline in the practice on the court. And uh, then, of course, respect and trust. I think those words are always uh, very important. Yes, of I totally agree with you, Thomas. Uh, guys, I remember you that we are talking with Thomas Amebuo, head coach of Russia men's national volleyball team and head coach of Zenit Kazan, but sorry, sorry, Zenit St. Petersburg. Sorry, 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 my fault. Uh, amigos, por favor, compartan esta transmisión, denle like, interactúen. Estamos hablando con Tomás Amelbuo desde San Petersburgo, Rusia. Um, uh, volleyball explained uh, another, another, another page, a uh, broader page, says a question by my side. A dream six players he would like to coach in one team if he's able to do it i mean i, I think he 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 is uh he's, he means about your your all-star team in yeah um, in days i think um it's difficult right <laughs> very i think it will take so long time if i start to to mention uh mention but um uh, Oh, oh, what, what let's say that the, the dream let's yeah. say that the dream team of a coach would be that that the work has been done and and you can just go to the gym and uh, switch on the lights and enjoy your team playing yeah. that would that would be the the most ideal and uh, the thing but of course it, it's not like that, and, but uh, I'm very happy to and honored to work with, uh, for example, with uh, Zenit St. Petersburg and the national team. For, for me, those are three teams, absolutely. And to work uh, with uh, one of and some of the greatest athletes that the, in our sport also is a big honor. So 
but if I have to mention uh, um, some some players that uh, that maybe still are playing or would be great to coach, I think, uh, uh, of course, Leon Leon is because is uh, where he went, he won, and seems to be uh, also the guy that works. Uh, of course, would be interesting and. Uh, Vital is coaching him, so yeah, right. in Poland and then so would be uh, must be interesting and uh, and and. Uh, but I'm very very honored to coach the players that uh, that I have now and um, mm, uh, well, Bruno, Bruno Resende, Bruno Resende, because uh, his leadership, his uh, focus, uh, will to win. Actually, will to win. I think we all have will to win, but, but will to do everything that it takes to win. What he has, uh, the leadership, the, the the choices and the difficult moments, and and how he remains. Yeah, I think he's would be very interesting to work with him. Okay, thanks. And uh, what about your historical dream team uh, or the, the all-time uh, dream team for you, Thomas? Which names uh, can you include? Uh, well, let's say like this. Uh, well, I could make, I think, 10 dream teams. But let's say <laughs> Peter Blanger setting. Yeah, for Netherlands. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, <laughs> Alexander Sani was great, was very dominant. Yes, but then they are the players that I, I didn't see so much playing. So um, I will put uh, Ivan Milikovic like opposite. Um, Spikers. Um, I have to put Sergei Tetyuhin. Le Russian legend, were just a player that he, if he was in the court, for everybody else was great to be in the court. Another spiker, um, Jiba. Um, what we miss? The middles. The middles. Uh, Stefan Hübner, the German middle, was very intelligent middle and. Uh, Oh, Gustavo, or Mastrangelo, there are so many, so many. And uh, and uh, as a libero, uh, I would say Henno, Uber Henno, because I, I played with him, but the, in this moment, I would put uh, Krebennikov, Krebennikov. Oh, thanks, thanks for that for one, one kind of team. Yeah, yeah, but I do agree with you. We can make three or four dream teams. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it also tells about how great sport we have, so we have a lot of... Yes, of course. Um, Thomas, um, how, how can you define you as a player and as a coach? Uh, there are uh, similarities in the, in the way you, you played and in the way you are coaching uh, today? I think I was a very emotional player. Uh, uh, I couldn't... Uh, many times I couldn't handle very well if I was not performing I as I could. I, I got sometimes frustrated and uh, really, uh, yeah, and, uh, but I think had, um, I love to work, even sometimes even too much. But um, yeah, emotional work ethic guy, I think I, I, I was a captain many times. Maybe I, I had pretty good leadership skills, I would say, as a player. As a coach, uh, um, I think I have calmed down during these uh, few years of coaching. Uh, uh, I like to speak a lot with players. Uh, I was very, very emotional and running through by the sideline when I start the coach now I think pre I, I'm calmer but uh, still of course uh, 
I get excited during the game. I love to also show sometimes the uh, the joy of the game. Uh, uh, focusing a lot on 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 team atmosphere, on on team thinking. Uh, that team thing and how to get different. It's always to talk, but. Uh, <laughs> Well, yeah, the, the how to get different personalities to be a good team. I don't speak about volleyball because it's it's easy to say he's good in this, blah, 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 blah. But maybe maybe this, and uh, of course, uh, my career is very short. So I'm trying to, I hopefully my philosophy and uh, is all the time improving. I hope so. So, yeah. So when I started to coach, uh, I got this question many times that what is your coaching philosophy? And I don't know. How can I know? How can I know what was my coaching philosophy? Because I never coached. So, <laughs> so it, 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 I, 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 now I can say already something, but uh, yeah, this thinking of team and that, that the team that never gives up and uh, yeah, those, those things. Okay, thanks, thanks, uh, Thomas. Um, what what were or what are the biggest challenges the um, Russia uh, national team has for the next uh, years? Oh, the, the, the the biggest challenges you found uh, once you arrived to Russia. Uh, mm, uh, challenges, yeah. What can be challenges? Uh, I think. Uh, Yeah, coming from Finland to the, this national team, first of all, the expectations are always the my own in on the top. So people expect to Russia to win, win, and uh, of course the pressure and the, that thing is, is totally different. And uh, but it, I think it's pretty normal. I don't think about that. Uh, I think it's obvious in all all big teams. And um, Challenges, I don't know, actually challenges, difficulties or whatever, um, but um, yeah, maybe because the, the, how to, how to be there, how to who play to, for those big, big results. And, uh, and also, of course, to, to uh, there are pretty a lot of players, so Uh, how uh, how to choose also the the, the best team and uh, also of course uh, volleyball is also very very important for all the country not only uh, in, in sports but it's it's, it's very im important for the government and uh, and also that's new that that's also new for me and uh, and uh, not anymore but uh, So there are those kind of differences. I, I would say, like uh, from Finland to Russia, for the for different expectations, and uh, I think that's thing. But it, it's I I don't say that it's a challenge. It's it's a normal thing in in these circumstances. Yeah, and that uh, that is my 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 next question. Uh, volleyball is uh, is is big in in Russia. I know uh, the league, uh, the national team, and the expectations, right? Volleyball is big in Russia. Yeah, volleyball is big here, and uh, and uh, also uh, yeah, it's important for the country. And uh, also, the next world champion championships will be played in Russia. Yeah, I know. And so, uh, the moment uh, how the the volleyball is seen is is very very important. And uh, the league is tough. Uh, Big sponsors and a lot of expectations also in clubs. So uh, it's also for the for the country is a very big image how the sport is going. So very very important. Yeah, well, I remember very well when uh, when Russia was the Soviet Union and they competing in the 70s, in the 80s, in the Olympics. It was a great great a great sport, great teams. And I also remember the 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 London. Uh, 2012 uh, Olympics uh, gold medal match. You remember that? It was pretty amazing. Brazil was up 2-0. Yeah. 
Muserski was moved to opposite, and well, yes. it is done. The game it's, it's a, I think it's one. It was one of the great, greatest finals in the Olympics in all time. Yeah, and actually, uh, when I mentioned about the big games, yeah, the, that game has to be mentioned as a as all time big games in the world. I think, and it was some like a courage uh, this this season. After 2-0 for Brazil to put Muzerski opposite, and it, it totally changed the game. And uh, also, when the momentum, I think that for volleyball is so great game that that the other team just have it all here, and one ball, one it can change everything. And when that momentum goes to the other side, and that mental changement of the game is. Yeah, it was a fantastic game. Fantastic game and people always will remember it here and, and what the, the coaching team of Alec and him, himself did there. Uh, yeah, he's it's, it's, it's a legend. What, what do you think was the, was the impact of that, of that event, of that gold medal at that time? And that impact is still, is still uh, moving forward, the Russian volleyball program? Yeah, I think the, the, the be Olympic champions, it's it's uh, so big that, and uh, of course it means that you can do it again. So <laughs> that that's something that that people expect to it happen also again. And um, but I think that uh, it it gave a lot of. Uh, confidence and, and proudness for all the country and for all the volleyball and uh, yeah that's that's i think it, it will be always remembered as one point of of uh, of that everybody will remember you where were you were that day do you remember that muselski was changed like over i think that's the like the legend that people always speak even if it was already eight years ago but it's still it's still here and uh, well, I don't know if you know this, but um, maybe we, I should ask to Alekno. But has uh, Muserski ever trained or practiced as an opposite? I think, yeah. Yes, yes, yes. And, and now in Japan, he plays opposite. And uh, also in, in his team in Belgorod in Russia, sometimes he played opposite. Yeah, yeah. And also in the national team last year, we had had few practices that, that Dima was uh, playing opposite, yes. Right, uh, Thomas. As a, as a volleyball fans, what do you think we can expect for uh, next uh, Olympic volleyball tournament in in Tokyo? The biggest volleyball party uh, in in few years, and uh, I think will be if you if we watch about our pool is very very tough, very tough, and uh, but it has to go in that context of end of pandemia i think that will be the, the also for people and then but i i expect uh, very very high level tournament of course uh, as usual and there are many teams that can take the medal many many teams and yeah well and i think uh, next year next year season would be one of the greatest in the in the in the in the last years because uh, well, uh, players are hungry to play, uh, fans are hungry to watch great volleyball, and I think uh, it, it's it's a personal opinion. Next year, uh, Nations League will be one of the greatest in the in the in the past twenty years. You know, because uh, all all teams want to be in their in their very shape for Olympics. Yeah, actually, you mentioned the great thing. So let's remember that this summer we didn't play. Uh, there was no competition, so like you said, I think it will be very, very uh, like uh, will to watch, will to breathe this atmosphere of uh, international games again. And uh, and after a volleyball nations league, that uh, it will come to the top in the Olympics. So so also we are thinking how to build that path, uh, how to become in the, in the best uh, shape possible there. And uh, Thomas, a, a part of uh, of Russia, of course. Which other which other teams uh, do you think uh, are the teams to watch uh, in the Olympics? Uh, 
I think one interesting teams with with little bit interesting team with very uh, interesting playing style is Argentina. They are they are our first opponent, very tough team, and interesting team to watch also. And uh, I think uh, I think all the teams who 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 can pretend to be on the medal, uh, Poland, France, uh, USA is always. If we watch the the stability of results and the, the main events, so USA, Brazil, they are always there, always, always there. And also there are some reasons. If you watch also the statistics, why are, why they are there? We have also also been watching those. And France, uh, yeah. So Canada is a very good team, and uh, yeah, Poland may be the biggest biggest uh, favorite. And uh, yeah, it will be it will be something. Yeah, I think we as a fans, we as a fan we will enjoy a lot of volleyball next year. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> yeah. Hey, um, uh, Thomas, if it were, if it will, it sorry, if it Italy, were, of course, Italy also, Italy is always yeah, right. Yeah, Italy, of course. Uh, Thomas, if it were up to you, which uh, volleyball rule would you change? for to, to grow the game to grow the the show um i would actually love if the um challenge if 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 it would be a little bit shorter because for the to be popular the volleyball i remember the people of today Let's say we are watching volleyball from the TV and we are many times changing the channels like we watch TV, okay? Then it becomes this long break for challenge, long break, oh, again, the, the game doesn't continue. Uh, people can change the channel and watch the other thing. So how to make this, these breaks during the game shorter? And uh, and uh, because we have intensive sport, we have great and beautiful sport. So not to have these two long breaks in the game. How to change that? I don't touch the rules of the game because I think, uh, yeah, when we get some new rules, we are always, oh my God, this is so difficult. But then we get to it and it, it becomes a normality. So, but that I think for the rules of the game, that challenge could be one thing. Yeah, challenges. Uh, something may last for five or six minutes. Some some yeah. challenges. That's a lot. Yeah, we also we can use it like a timeout <laughs> sometimes, and uh, that's uh, it's good. But uh, yeah, maybe for the beauty of the sport, uh, could be changed. Yeah, right. Um, well, Thomas, um, this has been a great, great talk with you. Uh, very funny, very entertaining. Uh, thanks a lot. You're a great person, also a great coach. And I wish you the best for next season, for Nations League, for, for Olympics, of course. We will be watching all volleyball, and me especially, Russian volleyball team, and uh, send it St. Petersburg. Um, I, uh, I don't know if you can say uh, some final word for all the people who are watching and, and listening. Yeah, first of all, thanks for being online and thanks for watching. And, and uh, uh, maybe after this, uh, we have a few more volleyball players in the world. That would be my, my request. So where you go, after this also bring my greetings for, for the people that go to play volleyball. It's a great sport. It can help us not only be sporty, but in life too. Um, try to stay healthy. But whatever happens, it's so e easy also to think about COVID and about the problems. Be positive, think about good things, smile, um, and so on. And uh, volleyball is a good sport to, to smile. And uh, for you, Alejandro, thank you so much for insisting with me uh, so long time. It's been a pleasure. And uh, I hope your volley talks uh, will, will stay as a, one of the legendary programs of our sport. So good to, 
thank you for everything. So it's just a pleasure. No, thank you, right. Thomas. Just one final question. Um, which uh, real Mexican food do you like the most? Fajitas. Fajitas. Yes. Uh, yeah, and uh, but I don't know if uh, also here at home I love to buy buy sometimes nachos. Nachos, yeah. Nachos. Oh, I love it. And, and there's one restaurant here in St. Petersburg that they make it with guacamole and uh, you can dip and uh, and uh, yeah, there are many things. I I love Mexican food. I love okay. Mexican food. Hopefully, not so many Mexican restaurants here actually. Uh, for for example, in Finland, they, we have we have a little bit more than here, but uh, yeah. Okay. Good, good, good. And I was sorry. Was one last question? Uh, uh, it was written. Um, do you remember this Mexican player, uh, Pepe Jose Luis Martel? I yes, he, he played in Finland. Left. Yes, yes. Sure. Yeah, the lefty. I think uh, yes, he, was, yes. uh, he was a great star, right? In, in Finland. Yeah, he, he played in Tampere. He played, I think, in also maybe in Vamala. Vamala. Yeah, yeah. He, he was a good player. He was a good player for Finnish League. Yes, absolutely. I remember him. Yeah, well, uh, did you play against him? No. No, I was actually already uh, abroad and the coach of right. coach that time, starting my coach, coaching years. Well, right now he's assistant coach of a uh, men's national team here in Mexico. Yeah, great, great. <laughs> Hello to Jose. Okay, well, Thomas, thanks a lot again for being here. Uh, it was a wonderful talk. Please uh, stay safe and hope that I can see you pretty soon in a volleyball court. Yeah, thank you. See you, Thomas. See you. Bye-bye.